Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to cover Ginkgo Bioworks. This is a company in the biotech sector and they focus specifically on synthetic biology. And that's pretty much engineering um, organisms to have new abilities. Uh, so just for example, say uh, you're a rose farmer and you want the roses to have a stronger fragrance. Uh, this company is working on different ways to change uh, organisms DNA in order to have um, some of those abilities so this doesn't just uh, this isn't just one sector this can branch out into multiple sectors um, so if you're new to the channel I focus on innovative investments within uh, many sectors so psychedelics cannabis um, biotechnology artificial intelligence so if you like this content please be sure to like and subscribe um, and let's get to the content so the company's mission is to make biology easier to engineer um, they see programming cells like programming a computer code uh, so a set of zeros and ones A's, T's, C's and G's which is the genetic code so they find similarities between the two uh, I think that's pretty interesting um, the team is from MIT uh, which is one of the top schools in the US and the world um, so first they were students here uh, and now they're working with their professor um, together. I think he's the CEO currently. Um, so MIT, Lisa Su went here. She's the CEO over at AMD. So there's a lot of talent there and a lot of smart people coming from that school. Kinko played a key role in the vaccine rollout uh, because cell programming tools are used um, in the manufacturing of the vaccines. Um, also, uh, like I said before, uh, these tools can be used in pretty much any industry, so uh, biotech, environment, food and agriculture, and technology. So they're not limited by one sector, um, and they can spread out and be diversified. So the expected market for bioengineered products is expected to be 2 to $4 trillion, uh, and this is only a $4 billion company. So they see huge growth coming uh, for them in the near future. Um, we saw that in their earnings. So uh, the revenue grew 282%, um, and that's up. So 44%, uh, 44 million, and then sales went up to 168 million within a year. So that's excellent growth. Um, and they're supposed to be growing because this company uh, is pretty highly valued. Um, also, um, as I showed before, they're diversified platforms, so they're launching a portfolio of animal-free protein programs, um, and I'll show you that later in this video. Also, fragrances, chemicals, uh, things like that. Um, so they're really diversified and working on many different things. So Ginkgo is working with a company called Motive to produce this meat alternative option, uh, and apparently it's just like ground beef or meat um, so the taste the aroma and it's animal free so you don't have to kill any animals you know there's a big issue going on with uh, cows and their effects on the environment releasing, releasing methane gas within the environment also animal cruelty things like that so more and more people are becoming vegetarian and looking for new options so they don't have to consume animals and you know pretty much contribute to uh, the greenhouse gases and the effects that's going on in the environment. So here's an alternative for that that they're currently working on. Um, it should be an exciting thing. Um, I'll try it out if it actually does taste like meat, but we'll see. They also have done a deal with Kronos Group back in 2018, um, developing a biologically engineered uh, cannabinoids, so things like THC and CBD. Um, and they're working on this primarily because um, I've been following the cannabis industry for the past five years. And a lot of the problems with these companies is that a lot of them aren't profitable uh, because their input cost is so high. So things like um, lighting, uh, soil, uh, extraction, things like that is a really expensive thing. Um, so they can't really pass along this um, expense to their customer all the time um, because you know, a customer is only willing to pay a certain price. Um, so there's a lot of in input costs and 
uh, a lot of these companies aren't profitable. Um, so Kronos is looking to you know save money and figure out a way to produce um, these compounds um, at a lower price. Um, that way they could save money and potentially become more profitable. And as we see, um, Kinko decided to be paid in common shares. So uh, they were issued up to 100 million shares. Uh, they reached certain production milestones. Uh, and you'll see that a lot. So they either get paid in equity or they get paid in royalties. Uh, so that's the various ways that uh, this company can get paid. And also, uh, the cost of the research was covered by Kronos, so they didn't have to do anything out of pocket, which is important for a company that is just starting out and trying to expand really rapidly. They also signed a really important partnership with Bayer, uh, and this is to provide research on agriculture biologicals. Um, and if they produce a product in the future, they're going to receive royalty from that sales. So that's really important to note. Um, these ag agricultural biologicals, these are naturally occurring in nature uh, and they help fight pests uh, and produce nitrogen within a plant. Um, and they're really important. But the good thing about this is that it's really sustainable and it doesn't really have uh, negative impact on the environment like our current solutions. So currently we use these chemical fertilizers to kind of fight off pests. And this has a really negative effect on the environment, um, causing tons of environmental issues. Uh, so it gets in the water, uh, it produces lots of carbon dioxide. Um, also, you know, there may be effects that we may not even know of. Um, so uh, like things like cancer. So um, I, I really like what they're doing here. It's definitely something that um, um, is really progressive for society. So the company projects that the unit cost of program sales would decrease 50% per year. So right now it's at around, I want to say $50 uh, to program a sale. Uh, by 2025, they expect it to be a couple of dollars to program a sale. So, you know, as the cost decrease to program a sale, the more money that this company will make. Um, so we'll definitely see, uh, if this happens, if it does, uh, this company definitely will profit off of this. Even a person like Bill Gates, who uh, is known as a value investor, so um, he has positions in Berkshire Hathaway, uh, Waste Management, Walmart, CAT, UPS. Those aren't really super high growth tech or biotech companies. Uh, but he has uh, a $275 million investment in Ginkgo. Um, you know, whether or not you like him, he is one of the founders of Microsoft, one of the biggest companies ever. Um, so, you know, just something to think about. I have a good amount of cash, so they're sitting at about 1.4 as of the June quarter. Um, so cash burn isn't really that big of an issue. Um, they did go through 200 million uh, in a year, it looks like, but um, to me, it's not really a concern just because of how much cash they have and it's a really low market cap company, so it's only about $4 billion. So, you know, about 25% of their market cap is in cash. So uh, a solid balance sheet with not much debt. Um, my concern would be profitability. Um, it doesn't look like this company is going to be profitable anytime soon. Uh, they're still losing a lot of money, um, but that's expected. It's still pretty much early stage biotech company um, with a lot of risk. Um, but their mar margins are around 50%, so they're pretty solid. Um, but that would be one of my main concerns, like uh, when exactly are you guys going to be profitable? But my projection is no time soon. So, you know, if you decide to add this part to your portfolio, just be uh, make sure you weigh it properly um, because, you know, we are in a pretty tough environment for stocks like this uh, that don't make money. So just be um, a acknowledge that issue. Overall, I'm really excited about this company. They operate in various industries um, that I'm really excited about. So cannabis, um, this animal free protein meat. Um, you know, they also had a lot to do with the COVID vaccines. Uh, and we saw how fast that rolled out. 
So they're doing a lot of innovative things that I think are good uh, for people and the environment. And I think a company like this could potentially make the world a much better place. Um, and this is only a $4 billion company uh, with trillion dollars worth of opportunity. So I think there's tons of upside here. Um, but of course, none of this is financial advice. Um, I'll be looking to add a position here soon. Um, I'm just waiting on the market to settle down a little bit. Maybe I'll add, you know, sometime next year. Uh, I'm not totally sure, but we'll see. Um, this company is trading at all time lows. So, you know, I think we have plenty of time to um, accumulate some of these smaller speculative stocks. Um, so we have plenty of time, in my opinion. But of course, none of this is financial advice. This is just me sharing my ideas. If you like this content, please be sure to like and subscribe. And thanks.